People living in Glassell Park are enjoying healthier air and more shade, thanks to beautification along a busy corridor. Gil Reyes shows us. The northeast community of Glassell Park has gotten much greener over the past several months, recently planting its 140th new tree. We're removing thousands of square feet of concrete just through these cuts to plant the trees. Los Angeles uh, is one of the most concretized cities in the world. So anytime we can remove a little piece of concrete and replace it with a tree or greenery, then that's a step in the right direction. 70 trees planted last summer. The last of an additional 70 were planted this winter. Glassell Park Area Councilman Mitch O'Farrell proud of the sweet shades, eastern red buds, and fern pines now beautifying San Fernando Road near schools and businesses. They're part of the city's What a Relief program, which aims to green main corridors across Los Angeles. In Glassell Park, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. And those trees are now beautifying a commercial corridor between the two freeway and Glendale Avenue. Well, here's your chance to indulge your sweet tooth, get a behind-the-scenes look at making that perfect cup of joe, and marking the year of the monkey. All this in this week's Things to Do. Dubbed the West Coast's biggest baking and pastry convention, the second annual L.A. Cookie Con and Sweet Show is coming to the Los Angeles Convention Center. Due to its popularity, they expanded it to two days. That means two days of seeing, sampling, and creating delicious treats. The convention will take place on Saturday, February 6th and Sunday, February 7th. Get your taste buds and sweet tooths ready for one sweet event. The convention will have celebrity chefs, special guests, a kid zone, baking workshops, a diverse array of free samples, and a baking contest. For more information, visit LACookieCon.com. And what goes better with cookies than some smooth and delicious coffee? Why not take a walking coffee tour of downtown L.A. on Saturday, February 6th from 12 to 2 p.m.? Hosted by BestTours.com, the tour features visits to some of downtown L.A.'s best coffee spots, with tasting included, barista demonstrations on how to make scrumptious coffee, commentary on coffee's history, and sightseeing opportunities around downtown Los Angeles. For more information, visit BestTours.com. Celebrate the Year of the Monkey by visiting the Xuan Tian Temple in L.A.'s Chinatown. The monkey is ninth of the 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac. Each year is related to an animal sign according to the 12-year cycle. On Sunday, February 7th, from 10 to 12 a.m., celebrate with a midnight temple ceremony. L.A.'s Chinatown community gathers to welcome good health, prosperity, and harmony for the Year of the Monkey. People will gather at the Xuantian Temple to make offerings, set off firecrackers, and burn incense to usher in good fortune for the new year. Participants include lion dancers, Buddhist monks, and many others. This tradition takes place on the eve of Chinese New Year's Day. For more information, visit ChinatownLA.com. And that's a look at some things to do. And a reminder for those of you who have an overdue City of L.A. library book. As we reported earlier in the show, you can return any undamaged book, DVD, or tape to any City of L.A. library and have all those late fees and past fines waived. And if you have a suspended library card, get that restored too. But you have to act fast. The program is only on from February 1st to the 14th. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at L.A. This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week.
all started that one day. I knew then my destiny. To have a career where I can achieve my best. Where every day is different. Where lifelong friendships are made. Where I'm saving lives and inspiring others. My name is Mackenzie Vandergeest, and I am a Los Angeles firefighter. Don't worry, Patty. This isn't going to hurt me one bit. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Shapiro in beautiful Encino, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. Open wide.
Good morning, good morning. Today's date, February, Friday, February 5th. We are at our Valley City Hall, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, I believe we have a quorum. Could you call a roll? Blumenfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Herstassen, Wieser, Caretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business? Minutes. Okay, Martinez moves and Englander seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Englander moves and Martinez seconds. Next. Mr. President, there's a request to continue 1A for two weeks to February 19th. Without objection, that'll be the order. Let's continue. Item two is an item noticed for public hearing. Do we have cards? Yes, there are cards on item two. Okay, let's hold that and move on. Item three is an item for which public hearing has been held. The committee report from the ad hoc committee on the 2024 Summer Olympics has been submitted and circulated for council consideration. Okay, any questions? Then let us prepare to uh, vote on this measure. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay, let's move forward to our next set of items. Items four through nine are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Yes, there are cards on all items, four through nine. Okay, that brings us where? Mr. President, that takes council back to presentations. Items called special or general public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so why don't we begin our day with our presentation portion. So I will defer to uh, Council Member Nuri Martinez. Ms. Martinez, the floor is yours. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce Paige Barn Hernandez as we recognize her for her dedication and commitment to serving the residents of the 6th District. Paige graduated from the North. Carolina Central University with honors receiving her BA in dramatic literature. Her liberal arts background prepared her to serve as entertainment chairperson over many regions wide during many region wide special events, including the Salute to Recreation, the Latin Jazz Festival, the Winter Solace, the Nutcracker in the City, and the Lotus Festival. In 2001, she was she became the Recreation Facility Director at Van Nuys Recreation Center. And while there, she has enjoyed the privilege of developing and cultivating communities. As a park director for her mission, she always dedicated to bringing events and programs to local communities so that they could enjoy the local area. Paige has served as Director of Brantford Park for, over, for the past six years. Paige has worked well with community and is always willing to lend a hand to help the community. Today, Paige remains committed to developing and cultivating the community that she serves and views her recent promotion to Senior Recreation Facilities Director as an opportunity to renew her commitment to the Department of Recreation and Parks and the communities that she serves. We want to thank Paige for her dedication and commitment to serving the district to serving the residents of Los Angeles and the constituents of Council District 6. It's my pleasure to introduce Paige Barnes Hernandez. Let's give Paige a round of applause. Paige, thank you for all that you, that you have done. Uh, we have several members of the Alita community. If they can please join me in presenting the certificate to um, Paige. You are not shy, folks. Come on. Let's <laughs> see, we have Robin from Reckon Parks. Good Shelly to see Dolby. you. Hi, Robin. 
Good to see we you have, wave. Um, and the only thing I want to, I just want to leave uh, colleagues with a thought is that I wish we had more pages in, in our districts. I mean, Brantford Park is impeccable due to the dedication and the amount of time she spends at the park working with our families and kids. And the community has a real respect for that park. And there is no funny business ever as long as Paige is there on the watch. So we want to we want to just thank you for all the great work that she's done in the district. And uh, they're going to be whoever replaces you is going to be has huge shoes to fill. Um, you're thank you're you. you're not replaceable, but we wish you all the best in your promotion. And I want you to say a few words. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I've been doing this for 19 years, and I've got amazing supervisors like Robin. And it's really, it's just, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to serve the community in any way that I possibly can. And I'm just, I can't do it without any of you guys. And I'm just very grateful to have the opportunity to have done so and to continue doing so. So thank you very much for this acknowledgement. Now, thank you and congratulations. So on behalf of the LA City Council, I want to present Paige. Barnes Hernandez with a recognition and best of luck in um, your future endeavor. We're going to miss you. And, um, and if we're in, di in dire need, we'll ask her to come back. So that's a condition. I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. Isn't that pretty? Just yes. drop it. Drop it. Over. There you go. Mr. President, I have a second presentation. I'd like to bring up the Mid Valley YMCA and representatives from AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation. Hi, Ray. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Too. Okay. That's okay. Everybody else does. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. So we're ready. Okay. This morning, it's my honor to recognize the Mid-Valley YMCA. The Mid-Valley YMCA is currently serving over 8,000 youth, adult family, and seniors across the San Fernando Valley. The area where the YMCA is located is one of the most underserved communities in the Valley for recreation and fitness activities. As one of the nation's leading nonprofit providers, the YMCA is committed to strengthening the foundation of community through programs that focus on youth development, health, healthy living and social responsibility. The Mid Valley YMCA is partnered with Digni Dignity Health, Northridge Hospital, and received a remarkable opportunity through AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation Connections for Cardiovascular Health Programs to launch a new collaborative program called Acti Activate Your Health. Established in 1993, the AstraZeneca Foundation is a Delaware nonprofit corporation and a 501c3 entity organized for charitable purposes. Established to promote public awareness of healthcare issues, to promote public education of medical knowledge, and to support and contribute to charitable and qualified exempt organizations consistent with its charitable purpose. It aims to reduce the risk of hypertension and heart disease among the underserved low-income adults in the San Fernando Valley by helping them build healthy lifestyles. This is a free program that entails health education, cooking demonstrations, grocery tours, group exercise, and health screens. I have to give some cooking lessons because I'm a mean cook. <laughs> the goal is to help participants reduce their Blood, uh, blood pressure and cholesterol levels while increasing their knowledge of nutrition and vascu cardiovascular risk. Upon the graduation of this eight-week program, participants will receive a three-month access pass to the Mid-Valley YMCA where they will receive the support of on-site health lifestyle coaches to continue on their health and wellness journeys. Mid-Valley YMCA is it, and its partners 
are one of 11 selected out of the 384 nonprofit organizations nationwide to receive this grant opportunity from the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation. They've received a grant of $156,000 to implement this important program. Here with us today are Greg Meyer, the Mid Valley YMCA board chair and a retired LAPD captain. Welcome, Captain. Thank you. Uh, we also have... Let's give him a round of applause. Come on. He's just as involved Thank as you, when sir. he was... Uh, you're not really retired. You never really retired. No, I'm still, still you're doing, still working. Still doing one or two things. <laughs> and we also have uh, Chad Maynard, the executive director of the uh, Mid-Valley YMCA. Raise your hand, Chad, so we know who's who. Juan de la Cruz, the vice president of community development at YMCA Metropolitan Los Angeles. Is he here? Not quite He's not quite here. Okay. And then we also have Sue Marasco, who is a senior vice president and bra of branch operations of the Metropolitan Metropolitan Los Angeles YMCA. Well, was Sue's also, in the blue. She was also a former Mid Valley um, uh, program director as well. Um, and here to represent AstraZeneca uh, Healthcare Foundation is Patricia Alvarez Sagun. Thank you for being here. She's the Director of State uh, Government Affairs. Welcome. And we want to give them a big round of applause. And I'm going to ask Patricia to say a few words as long as uh, uh, you want to go first, Chad? Who wants to go first, Chad? Okay. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Councilwoman Nuri Martinez for the remarkable support and opportunity for our Mid Valley Family YMCA. She has been such a remarkable partner for our community watching out for us, and we so appreciate it. Also, I'd like to thank her staff, uh, Chief of Staff Jim Dantana, Area Director Linda Levitan, and the remarkable team in her office for to the support and cause and mission of our Y. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the work of the LA City Council members here in attendance today. All of you worked tremendously hard with other YMCAs and other nonprofit organizations across LA to help improve the health and quality of life for our fellow Angelinos. I would like to extend my deepest thanks to the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation and their connections for cardiovascular health program for this remarkable grant opportunity to help improve the cardiovascular health of so many of our mid San Fernando Valley communities. Here today representing the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation is Patricia Alvarez Sagun, Director of State Government Affairs. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the extraordinary efforts of Rich Buckley, President of the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation, Executive Director Joyce Jacobson, as well as all the trustees and team members for the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation. Your generosity is and will continue to change and impact the lives of our community. Also, I want to thank those who have joined me here in representing the Mid Valley Y, our wonderful board chair, retired LAPD Captain Greg Meyer, and Senior Vice President and former Mid-Valley staff, Sue Marasco. And lastly, I just wanted to say, share that the YMCA's across this country is more than just a swim in a gym. It's a cause-driven charitable organization in each neighborhood where people find community. No matter what walk of life you come from and no matter what, what you have in your pocket, you're always welcome and treated as an equal at your neighborhood Y. So thank you again for having us here today, and we really appreciate the opportunity. Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation, I would just like to say um, thank you today to Councilmember Martinez for the recognition, um, and thank you as well to the LA City Council. Um, and then finally, to the YMCA Mid Valley um, chapter, we're very pleased to support you in your efforts to provide uh, better nutrition and better health overall to the residents of the Van Nuys and San Fernando Valley. So thank you again for the recognition. We appreciate the support on behalf of the AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I, I, we have two um, certificates of recognition for both uh, Mid Valley YMCA and also AstraZeneca Healthcare Foundation. Thank you both for the amazing opportunity to work with you and also the amazing services you'll be providing to the community. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, thank you all and congratulations to each and every one of you. With that said, Mr. Uh, Bloomingfield, would you like to take the floor, sir? Mr. Ms. Martinez, 
Mr. Englander. Photos. Um, I just wanted to recognize uh, Nuri for bringing in the YMCA and the partnerships that they collaborate with outside the Y. And and Greg, it's it's. I think you're more dangerous with a suit and a tie than you are with a gun and a badge. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot like, yeah, and you're working probably a lot more than you were before. I see you everywhere now. Uh, the Mid-Valley, just the work you guys do is just phenomenal. And uh, I, I, for years, worked with Wendy Saunders for, you know, many, many years and her leadership and just keeping that place going. Um, and, you know, my, I'm passionate about the YMCAs and all of our community, as I know you all know. Um, but Nuri's involvement in the Y is just so important and such a just a great connection with what she can bring and continues to bring to all of you. And Jim D'Antona's support, I know he's been very involved in the Mid-Valley for a long, long time as well. And uh, my heart goes out to you guys for, uh, for everything you do to help so many families. You never turn a family away for inability to pay. Connecting families with opportunities they never had, not just about health, but the relationships that go into them. The YMCA, uh, as you all know, really gave me an opportunity that I would have never had with my kids otherwise, um, with the fa family and child parent programs that they have. It's just phenomenal. So thanks for bringing them in today. And uh, God bless you guys for everything you do. Thank you so much. And we certainly have a, a you, you set the bar in terms of fundraising for the YMCA. So we've, you've definitely put, um, set the example. So thank you for those words. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Englander. Mr. Bloomingfield. For our next presentation. The whole crew up here. Steve, why don't you get, get close over here? Because this is the man we're honoring right now. Good morning. Uh, Wait, it kills me. Everybody goes, wants to get on one side. Here, come around. <laughs> this is just come around. And get in, get in a little closer. Yeah. All right, Mr. Bloomingfield. You got you to get, you gotta get in the photo. As, thank you, uh, both our council member and, and uh, logistics coordinator. <laughs> so good morning, colleagues, council president. It is a pleasure to recognize a great San Fernando Valley leader, Stephen Musnicki. Now, Stephen, or Steve, as we all call him, was born in, in Boston. But he grew up in New York, and uh, after high school graduation, he joined the Navy, and in nine tours of duty, served all seven continents. He received five Navy commendation medals for service in places such as war-torn Somalia, Croatia, Antarctica. All worthy of being honored, but not why we're honoring him today. I'm just, just showing you that he's, he's a badass. Um, after leaving the Navy, Steve moved to the San Fernando Valley, where he became deeply involved in providing services to others through his, through this church and through the ministries it per performs. But his true passions have always been bicycles and helping children. In, 19, in 2009, Steve found a nonprofit corporation now known as Fleet Street that merged those two passions together in a wonderful way. With a headquarters at the Pacific Lodge Youth Services in Woodland Hills, Fleet Street trains boys in the juvenile justice system to repair donated used bikes. In the past three years, Fleet Street has donated more than 1,000 children's and adult bikes to foster care children, veterans, shelters, and all sorts of persons in need. He extends his reach by partnering with a lot of amazing organizations, many of the, whom you've heard, including our GRID program, New Directions for Youth, Communities in Schools, the San Fernando Valley Coalition on Gangs, Sick La Via, and many other organizations. And the Fleet Street volunteers have repaired nearly 1,500 bikes for free at community events in these past three years. Most recently, Fleet Street has partnered with the Rescue Mission Alliance to sell reconditioned bikes with a 90-day guarantee through the Alliance thrift stores to get bicycles and basic transportation uh, and access into those who may not be able to afford uh, other forms of transportation. And the proceeds of these sales go to help and support homeless services uh, of the rescue mission and the programs of Fleet Street. It's amazing how many ama missions they're able to accomplish uh, at once. And Steve's goal, which I love, is to provide hope and happiness one bike at a time. It's a, it's a, it's a great saying. We should all adopt it. I'm particularly proud to have uh, Steve join me, my team, 
and hundreds of uh, Valley residents as a sponsor of my third, my three annual West Valley Community Bike Rides. They've been out there at every one, uh, not only providing a place to, to repair the bicycles, but really being part of the engine of, of healthy living, connecting bicycles and people together. Um, we, and and at, at this event, we highlight the uh, infrastructure of the West Valley and neighborhoods, and we highlight the great work of organizations uh, like Fleet Street. Steve works tirelessly to improve the community, and I'm really proud to be able to honor him with uh, friends and colleagues around uh, from Fleet Street and to give a certificate to him. So let's, let's, uh, let's pedal our wheels together and put our hands together. Steve, congratulations. congratulations. Let's see Take a group shot with everybody. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Do you want to say a word yes, or two? Can I, can I please. please. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you so much for having me today and honoring me. It's a, it's a, I'm humbled very much. Uh, my passion is to work with the, the young youth, the at-risk youth, and uh, I love training those guys. And they do so much good. Uh, they're our future, so that's my passion to work with those guys. I also want to thank uh, all my family and friends. I would call all these guys behind me my family because they've supported me this whole uh, endeavor. And I love every one of them. They're great people. Um, I, I just want to thank the city council for passing a resolution a few months ago on the LAPD bikes. We now give those to veterans. and. Uh, we have a little package we'll pass out to you guys later that has some thank you letters from the veterans to the city council uh, for receiving these bikes um, and for their rehabilitation. And I, I thank you for passing that resolution. Thank you, Mr. Bloomingfield. Yeah, thank you and congratulations, Steve. And that, that package has already been circulated. It's on everybody's desk, uh, an envelope with some of those letters in them. Thank you. Great. Now, thank you. And uh, good, well done, Mr. Bloomingfield. Okay, uh, now that uh, concludes our presentation portion of our program. Let's, Madam Clerk, move to item two. And I've got cards. I've got uh, Mr. Spindler, uh, Mr. Walsh, and Ms. Fogler. Please come forward on this item. Item two. What a waste of fucking money. Look at this. Revenue bonds for what? For poverty pimps. $20 million of poverty pimp money for simply pimping people out in CD number 10. Scatter the money. Scatter the money in the bitches. Yes, $20 million of total waste and fraud on something called Buckingham Road. It sounds so British, doesn't it? Yes, you too can live with the royal family at 4143 Buckingham Road, where dreams come true and drive-by shootings are the reality of the day. Vote no, but none of you will do that because you're in the pocket of poverty, Pip Wesson. Okay, uh, Mr. Walsh, I believe you're up, followed by Ms. Fogler, then Ms. Pierman. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighland.org, hollywoodhighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This is another little sneaky uh, uh, federal, this is federal money for... Something no one ever can say anything against or, or check out, which is $20 million for an 83-unit scattered site, multifamily rental housing, affordable, that's if you can afford $1,000 a month, called Buckingham Apartments on Buckingham Road and Ursula Avenue. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is not kosher because it costs the city five times as much to build an affordable housing unit as it does through the uh, developers, hollywoodhighlands.org. Okay, Ms. Fogler. 
followed by Ms. Pierman. With the debt that we're accruing, I'm not a bit surprised how expensive this project is and all the other projects that you people have pushed through. So I agree with uh, John Walsh. It's absolutely a very bad deal and it should, it should be scrapped. So get rid of it. Thank you. I Thank my you, Miss uh, Pierman. One minute for me. Miss Pierman. <laughs> Great, another revenue bond. What we really need <laughs> twenty million dollars for an eighty-three house. Maybe it should be one hundred thirty and more money. It's a scattered brain site, multifamily, non-affordable housing. Just what we need: more traffic, more water use, more revenue. Yeah, on these streets, on Buckingham and Ursula and Gibraltar. Yeah, that's something we really need to bring in the valley. Sunday's so supposed to be on the Valley agenda. Way to go, CC! And uh, let's see, just go down to a minute over here. So, yeah, $20 million. I can't believe that anybody's even thinking of talking about this amount. So, but that's something that the city council loves to do spend money. Way to go, CC! Okay, let's prepare to uh, vote. Let us open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. We'll now move to item four. Item four, I have Mr. Uh, Spindler, Sean Murphy. Mr. Gus. Uh, please come forward, then I'll call the, uh, up the other speakers. So right now, Mr. Spindler, Mr. Murphy, and, and uh, Mr. Gus. Once again, more persecution. The fucking reprogram. The inverse condemnation scheme of the city of Los Angeles. But today we're in the valley. But today we're talking about the pimp daddy areas of CD 9 and 10. Yes, you come to the valley to destroy those homeowners. They are supposed to be in compliance. But thank God after all of this time, the hood can finally see today that in the hood, Four people have been given amnesty. Four slave owners have been freed from the captivity of C.D. 10 and Herb Wesson and Price, another one who's owning slaves. So, yes, you, you have freed these homeowners. Free them all. Okay, if I could add a next, next speaker, Mr. Murphy. Yes. Reef begin. If they don't do a good job of landscaping your house, you don't pay your rent to this to them anymore. You pay it to the city of Los Angeles housing. Thank you. So if I could have Mr. Gus, Mr. Walsh, and then Ruth Sarnoff, please come forward. One minute only, please. One minute only. I'm glad to see these properties are coming off the rent escrow account program. See, you wanted to, you should have apologized to me. Now you can't. These files, these files are cold and dead, just like Gladys Wesson. Look, you're off, off subject. Topic. You're off subject. You are off subject. Okay, Mr. Walsh. Blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. This is the REAP program. I first moved to uh, Los Angeles in 1966 before a number of you were born. I was an adult then. And uh, we're talking about these pro uh, removing these various properties. Again, the landlords have not kept up the, uh, the property. There are violations, and you went after them and did a very, very good job. Remember. You don't know when I get up whether I'm going to be positive or negative, and I'm very, very positive when you help renters, and very, very, very negative when you tear our affordable units down. HollywoodHighlands.org. Keep up the good work. 
Okay, uh, Ms. Sarnoff, Ruth, followed by Ms. Fogler, followed by uh, Ms. Pierman. Um, Council, um, I think I have some questions. This is an area that I am somewhat unfamiliar with. I am concerned about how much um, housing that could be uh, renovated and solarized and turned into a usable property for um, low-income people, uh, perhaps for some of the homeless, or to put uh, where there are apartment units to renovate because there is nothing uh, worse than having a slumlord for a long time and then to be evicted and rolled out and become homeless. So it's kind of from the frying pan to the fire. I think you need a process where the people who come here should have some immediate access to help in resolving what kind of problem it is, whether it's a tax problem, indoor blight, outdoor blight, failure to meet certain codes, and then uh, take it from there and give the tenants a chance to have a voice in the outcomes of some of these because we are rolling too many people into homelessness. If you remember, it hasn't been too long back in August when you were warned by the LA Times and an important uh, Get back um, on bit the subject, of information to that 13,000 people a month are being rolled into uh, homelessness. It's not always permanent, but they are falling into it, and it's from the mortgage evictions and the evictions for a lot of the high-rise uh, skyscrapers and other development in the central city particularly. And I may be, thank, um, thank you, you thank can deal you. with some better process. Thank, thank you. you. So Ms. Fogler and Ms. Pierman. Yeah, without the video conferencing, I'm pretty much Stay on the here. subject, uh, Miriam, please. Okay, I like this uh, rental thing that you got. It sounds like if uh, John Walsh thinks it's great, I go along with what he says because he's pretty much on top of this, and I appreciate that, uh, uh, that you keep the good work up on this. Thank you very much. One minute only. Thank you. Ms. Pierman. Ms. Pierman passes. Okay, let's prepare to vote. On this item, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. We'll now move to item five. Uh, Mr. Uh, Spindler, uh, Mr. Gus, and Mr. Walsh. So, now we're going to let the Jewish Marvin Broad Constituent Center, connect the dots. Yes, it's time to connect the dots. We have to have public and art environmental science workshops. Like, for example, how do you sell your home and leave L.A.? That's a good environmental Speakers science workshop. Topic. Get back on the topic, Mr. Spindler, please. The, the House Negro is interrupting me, please. The dots, Van Nuys. Trying to connect the dots that the House Negro continues to You're not to on the subject. Me. You're not. Thank you One very much, Mr. Spindler. You're off sub subject. I warned you twice. Next speaker, Mr. Gus. One minute only, please. One minute only. So we have the use of the building next door for, among other things, uh, P Pacoima, beautiful. Jesus, talk about a, talk about a conflict of... Uh, uh, in naming, Pacoima, beautiful. But th one of these groups talks about um, water reclamation and beautifying, Van uh, what is this, uh, Van Nuys Boulevard. Is that really the best use of city resources? It, shouldn't you be focusing on these other ills of society? You're, 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 you're putting, what do you call it, a silk purse on a sow's ear. This is a misuse and a misdirection of your efforts, of, of city assets. This thing is uglier than public figure Fabian Wesson. Thank you. Thank you. You're off the subject, uh, Mr. Gus. 
I think she's a very attractive woman. Number five, uh, relative to the use of connect the dots, nowhere here does it tell us how much it is going to cost the taxpayers to quote unquote connect the dots. I'm told that it's six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. I have a pen right here. I'll connect the dots for you anyway. But again, it's the L.A. County Bicycle Coalition. The L.A. County, that's politically correct times a million. The L.A. Bicycle Co Co Coalition could murder me and you'd give them an award. There's nothing the Bicycle Coalition can do that's politically incorrect. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel sorry for what Mr. Marvin Browdy. I spoke in front of him uh, many times. He's gone now. He died. But that his name is involved in this, the Area Land Institute. Pacoima, beautiful, uh, isn't it? HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you. Let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. We'll go to item six. We'll start off with you, Mr. Murphy, and then we'll go to Mr. Uh, Spindler, and then we'll go to Mr. Gus. Yes, item number six. Uh, I'm kind of against this pro item. Okay, next, Mr. Spindler. Mr. Spindler, next. Mr. Gus. Okay, then let's move on. Let's uh, prepare to... Oh, no, no, no. I've got uh, Ms. Pierman and I've got a Ms. Fogler. So please come forward. Anyway, project near and dear to Mr. Labongi, a vacant lot for Griffith Park. <laughs> yeah, let's move them. Uh, they, this is where they can move money around and have some fun. So I just want to say that uh, I don't know why you're playing around with this $200,000 from real estate funds to put in another one. just seems like they want to have be able to um, say that that's why you're here. You don't want to say, I don't have enough projects. So, way to go, CC. Ms. Fogler, followed by Ms. Cernoff. Come on, Marion. Restart her clock. Okay, I'm going to be need one minute. Yeah, I concur with Donna because the fact is that you're wasting money when we have a budget crisis in this country already and the city's already in the big debt. I lost track, but it's very big. So, folks, you know, we don't want to bankrupt our government because it's the greatest system we have in the world. Thank you. Mr. Previn. I don't have a card on Ms. Sarnoff on this issue. Mr. Previn. Uh, good morning, Council President Wesson. Uh, here in the item number six, if I'm not mistaken, which... Is, is that correct, sir? It is six? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the great David Rue and Mitchell Farrell have put together a little motion to put $200,000 from the Real Property Trust Fund account in Mr. Rue's district, which would obviously be Mr. Labonge's district previously, CD4. Now, Real Property Trust Fund accounts are very interesting to the public. What they, what they are is mostly from oil pipeline fees that come in and then uh, other ways that the council district, which I'm not going to go into the minutia of, earns money. One is donations from like NBC Universal. So typically the funds run about, on average, around a hundred and something thousand dollars in it at all times. And what those funds are used for, very interesting to members of the public uh, and Mr. Dawson, Harris Dawson, is that what we do with this money is we fix up the roadways and the curbs and the sidewalks. It's really a great program um, because that is, as we all have heard from the Willits case and from other things, a, a pulsating problem here in Los Angeles. But here, we are doing something slightly different. Here, we are diverting $200,000 of the money earmarked for the CD4 uh, roads and curbs and such like that. And what we're going to do, uh, courtesy of Mr. Rue, uh, is buy 11 acres of stuff above the Hollywood sign. Now, you can certainly imagine this is a sweetheart deal, because not, not, not for them, for us, because for only $200,000, we are getting 11 acres of pristine above the hill, and this is something that we like to do. Um, who are we getting it from? 
is the primary question. And who are we getting that uh, information? So Mr. Rule will address that, I'm sure. Um, but the other question is, uh, is that really a good use of that money? We refunded NBC Universal from the CD4 account, 137,000 service money. I don't know why. The balance is currently 500 and something, if I've got it correct. Um, and the balance for CD2, just because Mr. Krikorian always likes to hear it, is about 800 and something thousand because we sold a firehouse to Richard Weintraub, and he put half of that 500 Thank into you. our account. So Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Let's prepare now to uh, Mr. Rue. I'm, so oh, I'm sorry, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for our viewing audience, I just wanted to clarify uh, the 11 acres is just north of the Hollywood sign, but more importantly, it is um, uh, just, north, uh, just north of the Mount Lee Communication Center. Um, so this is not only to preserve wilderness and pu uh, public and park space, but it's also a public safety issue. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we acquired this spot um, to preserve it as well as um, maintain our public safety aspects of it and emergency contacts. And... Um, as for the NBC Universal, I think it was off topic, but in any case, we refunded it to NBC Universal so we so they could give it directly to the communities because um, uh, it was taking some time for us to process. So we uh, we spoke with the city attorney's office and whatnot, and this was the best way to get the money to the community as soon as possible, so we could um, make sure those projects are served. Thank you for that clarification. Let's prepare to vote. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Okay, now we'll move on, Madam Clerk, to item seven. So we'll start off with item seven, Mr. Spindler, followed by Mr. Murphy, followed by Mr. Gus. This is item seven. Yeah, this is Mr. Rue's item. Item seven, I am a, uh, I'm kind of for this project. Okay, thank you. So, again, Mr. Spindler, Mr. Gus, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh passes. One minute only, please. This talks, one minute only, please. This talks about special events. Uh, and I guess, what special events? Are you talking about for small community groups, or are you talking about special events for nonprofits like the Grammys that don't need it? So you need to specify what special events. Is it for the poor kids in the neighborhood, or is it for wealthy organizations like, like the, the, the Movie Pictures Academy or the, the Grammys? Um, it's just like when you guys are missing sentences in these things. This is too vague. You need to be specific. It is as ugly as public figure Fabian Wesson. You're off the topic. topic. You're off the topic. And you know, Mr. Gus, if you have a problem with me, just direct it to me. You want to play dozens like a child, then go right ahead. But if you have a problem with me, be a man and address it to me. Don't act like the 11-year-old boy that you are, all right? So, with that said, can I have the next speaker, Ms. Uh, Pierman or Ms. Cernoff on item seven, please come forward. Ms. Fogler. Why do we need to spend tra uh, transfer funds, $160,000 for special uh, um, events? Well, the only special event I'd like to see is everyone together, get together and bring back video conferencing. Thank you. I think um, I think I want to speak to the, the, just the question of the way money is transferred between accounts because there's got to be some clarity for people who um, take a lot of time uh, and there aren't very many of us, by the way, who took a lot of time to try to track things. Uh, to my me best knowledge, um, the um, the things, many of the things that came today, I signed up for both five and six. I was not called. Um, perhaps someone can rectify that. Um, 
If I could, okay, if you could take the rest of my time, I would like to speak to both five. Yeah. And because we're on I'm, item seven, ma'am. I know, but I was not called for five and six. Okay, and we're I on think. item seven. You can, we'll address that on the side of the ropes. By the officer here who took the cards just now. And not, they were submitted a long time ago, and he knows it. We'll take a look and at I it. am going to take it. I'm going to take it and make a formal uh, phone please stay call. On, please stay on topic. Right now you can address that on the side of the ropes with the sergeant, but stay on topic on this particular item, please. I object to the way money is transferred uh, from account to account. Um, I protested a big bunch of money that goes from the Department of Water and Power every year into the general fund. All you have to do is look for the tail end of the budgets and go back in time and you'll see the transfer and it grows every year. So you want to keep playing with money, then the place where the money was supposed to go year after year, which was to do to do infrastructure, didn't get spent there. It got spent somewhere else. And I'm not saying everything that money is spent for goes in somebody's pocket. I'm not even implying it. It's just we have to know, and people have to have a way to sign in. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And uh, seeing no other, oh, we've got one more card on seven. Uh, Miriam Volker, did you want to speak? Okay. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and uh, then open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That item is approved. Next item, please. Item 8, called special for cards. Great, thank you very much. Wayne. Followed by Dan, followed by John, followed by Donna, followed by Miriam, followed by Ruth. In whichever order you all choose. All right. Got to get your ass up here. Well, what is this bullshit about an aggregate maximum sum of any payment of a city reward? Aggregate sum. A woman was raped. And that's all pussies worth to you, a maximum of $50,000. Now, what kind of message does it say to the female university student? You have to offer $500,000 to catch the rapist immediately. $50,000 isn't going to do anything. And you're putting words like aggregate maximum sum. Those are words for lawyers and accountants, scumbags, not police officers who need to find this scumbag rapist. Raise it to $500,000, your rapist will be captured immediately. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This is the most important agenda item. We're talking about a woman who was raped just recently, because the council action was on August 28th of, of last year. She was raped at UCLA. She was beaten and raped. And now, no one... Meanwhile... You have just told uh, Switzerland, come here. We have a crime-free campus for you. Meanwhile, you're offering $50,000 for any information leading to the arrest of the UCLA rapist. And what are you getting? Absolutely nothing, because they fear anybody who saw it happen on campus. This didn't happen uh, in, in the, on the sidewalk. This happened in a campus. The police are worthless. The UCLA police are worthless. Okay, one minute only, please. No, you know what? I'll take my two minutes. I'll take my two minutes. This item says for the rape of a female university student. Well, the question is, which incident are you talking about? 
which campus are you talking about? Because I don't know if you guys saw the news last night, but last night the UCLA police did arrest a suspect for a rape in a coffee shop in Westwood. So the question is, is this reward for that arrest from last night? I think before you start awarding these or renewing these rewards, you should know what's going on in current events. So before you vote on it, tell us, is this reward pertaining to the arrest last night in Westwood at a coffee shop? That's the problem with these vaguely written pieces. It doesn't work. You, uh, is it for this or is it for a rape at another campus? And we know that there are rapes of female students at other college campuses in Northridge, at USC. Is this for that? Is this for the Westwood one? And fuck Jane Englander in the ass. Um, you know what? You are um, rude, crude, and socially unacceptable. So I would suggest you might want to just go back and uh, seek some help. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Hey, and you know what? If you clap again and you're going to disrupt this meeting, and if you go off topic and say anything else, and you attack any of our families personally, and you want to make it personal, I'm going to ask the guards to escort you out. Um, first, first Amendment notwithstanding. Okay, you just laughed, and I said, you know what? You're calling out. So one more outburst. One more outburst. And we're going to ask you, to, we're going to dismiss you from the meeting. Did you want to say something else? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Ma'am? Uh, I, I want to just remind everyone that unsolved rape crimes uh, tend to result in more rapes because rapists that get away with rape, rape again. Um, I remember when the LAPD had uh, a great big uh, exhibit there about all the back backlog of rape cases and all the unsolved rape cases here. And often when you find a rapist, you will find that they have raped multiple women. So what I think it, we need is an approach to this. I, I don't know how to react to the amount of money or any of that. I just think it needs a, 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 a deeper look and a prioritizing because violent crimes and rape is a violent crime. Whether you kill a person or you don't, it's violent. Thank you. Thank you. Donna Perriman. Women when, when, would be raped if they had the right to carry their own firearms. It would be... Nothing ever really gets take, um, that nothing gets better for that s person that got raped. If, you know, I realize there's not too many women on the uh, city council over there, only uh, um, Martinez. But so, uh, I wish there were more women, because uh, this is really a, um, very much a woman's issue, because not too many men get raped. So we had the right to be uh, carrying. I hope people are hearing me, because I think it's all uh, right, my mic went down. Anyway, uh, we have the right to carry so we can protect ourselves and uh, so these rapes won't happen. I love they have no rape at all and so we won't need a reward. Bye. You know, we're so infested with all these violent people out there now who want to commit these uh, terrible things to women because that seems to be the thing that men like to do. They like to so, make women like look like piece of dirt and then they want to take away the firearms and we need to have them to protect ourselves from these rapists and murderers. It's about time the California changes the law so that we can have these rights to protect us us women, it's about time women stand up and stop being a victim and say that enough, enough is enough from these rapists and murderers. 
who try to, to, to hurt women and other young kids and minorities. We need to stop this injustice that's going on here. We need to stop this. We can't have this their kids. I have a 22-year-old. I don't want her attacked and raped. She's going to Boston. I don't want her hurt. So folks, hear me. We need to have a right to have our guns to protect ourselves from these rapists once and for all. That's it. Thank you. My one minute. That was two minutes, ma'am. Thank you. You're done. All right. So, excuse me, um, Wayne, you just yelled out again. So that's disrupting the meeting. I've warned you already once. So have a nice weekend. Bye. We'll see you next week. Dan, did you, Daniel, did you want to say something too? I, I hear you talking over there too. Did you, do you want to disrupt the meeting? Okay. Well, we're going to hold off. We're actually now waiting um, and disrupting the meeting while we're waiting for Wayne to gather his belongings and, um, and be escorted out because he's continuously disrupting this meeting and he's been warned on numerous occasions. We'll continue to wait. Mr. Kretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Just because uh, uh, previous speakers are just making stuff up, I just wanted to say for the record, this did not take place at UCLA. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, and so with that, we'll go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, next item, please. Item 9, called Special for Cards. Okay, Sean. not supporting. Thank you, Eric. You're up. Yes, Eric, you. Yes, Eric, it's you. The same Eric that fills out a card on every single item. That's you, yes. Thank you. S Time sir, is yours. Uh, I, this is my second item today, and my name is Eric Previn. And your name is Mitch, but we're not on a first name basis, so in the future just call my name. Thank you. And don't disrupt the meeting. This is thank you, Eric. Thank you to Mr. Blumenfield uh, once again uh, for all of the work he has been doing for the Lowy family who are based in Australia and uh, run what I can only describe as a really substantial um, mall business. They have 38 malls in America. They um, recently put one in, and as we all know, in Topanga, uh, down uh, uh, over by the Warner Center, and it's, uh, it's near a traffic transit corridor. And those of us who are historians know that the Huntingtons were smart, too, because they figured out if you get near the railway, guess what? You're going to get rich. So these guys have moved their mall uh, from the rack, where I obviously was doing my uh, wardrobing, um, which has turned into a dismal ghost town. And this is um, the sad part of this otherwise exciting story because what we're doing at this item is we're bringing in RSG. Now the good news is, is I mean RSJ. RSJ uh, do a fantastic job of making sure the numbers add up. Um, they are being paid unfortunately by Westfield which has been the subject of my ire because you know I understand we want we don't want to spend city resources on that kind of thing because we're they're going to be getting the benefit but if we allow them to pay the guy who's assessing the financials well, of course, uh, you know, you work for who you, I mean, except for in this or organization where you would technically work for the public but have been working for others, this is the others. So that's the problem here. And what I would ask is, is that we thank RSJ for their earlier consulting work, but do it something different and find a firm that has not been so mired in the financials of this particular group and is now being paid by this particular group, even though that is an old ideation that works very well. Hey, we're going to fix the curb. Give us an extra 30 grand. We'll get you through all the line ahead of all the public. These guys have a lot of money. The Lowy's, by the way, should not be impugned in any way for what they're doing because they are very effective. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Joanne? On item 
Item nine. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was on. We're going to general public. Oh, that was. That concludes all the speaker cards for that item. And seeing nobody on the queue, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. All right. Now we'll go. I believe that uh, concludes the agenda. We'll go ahead and to go into general public comment. Uh, I will remind everybody that general public comment doesn't necessarily mean anything you wish to speak about. It's for items that are only under the purview of the Los Angeles City Council as pertaining to the rules of this body. Um, if you are off topic on general public comment, you'll forfeit your time. Thank you very much. Um, and that means anything off topic. It's staying within only the purview specifically of the Los Angeles City Council. Joanne? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Joanne Yovanek Gard from West Hills Neighborhood Council, and I'm also a budget advocate. I just, one little thing, I wanted to say that we in West Hills agree with finding existing venues for the 2024 Olympics. So I just want to get that out of the way. My big concern is the um, Aliso Canyon, and there are 222 wells there. Almost half of them are over 50 years old. Most of those, a significant number, do not have current safety valves. This presents a big hazard for the city, for the North Valley, our district. And I know, you know, we're in West Hills, but I live north of Roscoe, and there are times that the gas smell permeates my house. And I'm concerned about that. I have four grandbabies living with me. Okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joanne. Mark Morris. Good morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Mark Morris. I'm uh, vice president of Save Porter Ranch, a uh, uh, group in the uh, Porter Ranch area that has existed for over two years uh, addressing environmental issues. And this gas leak uh, is uh, terrible, and it's requiring certain types of uh, fixes that um, can uh, be done on the state level with the support of the LA City Council. I'm sp speaking specifically about Senate Bill 380, which was crafted by uh, Senator Pavley, which would ask for a, a, a moratorium on any uh, injection of gas or any production of gas in that area until everything is uh, finished, everything is uh, secured, and Dogger knows what's going on. So I'm here to ask the City Council if you could please write a letter of support for this SB 380 uh, in a resolution showing endorsement. Thank you. Great. No, thank you very much. Candido. Hold my time, Mr. President. Hold my time. Thank you, Mr. President. Hold the sample here. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, sir. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Candido Maris. Proud, proud, super proud resident of the 12th District. And I, I want to thank the Council uh, for being here today and for supporting us in, in the 12th District. I'm here because I want to thank your... Uh, your staff, Mr. Englinger, uh, they have returned calls. They, they're doing everything possible to help those of us in the Porter Ranch community. Um, I had four uh, company officials from the gas company come to my home to see the situation on Tuesday, uh, and they're doing everything they can. But uh, if it weren't for your office and the things that you are doing there, uh, I don't know if it would be uh, going as well. But uh, that's something you have done all your life and you know somebody might here might say that i'm kissing butt i never kiss butt but i do like you know, you know what if you want to do some is there a laugh over there but sometimes you know this has gotten out of control this has gotten out of control what's happening here i can i should be able to come here and thank my councilman for doing a great job and i should be able to criticize those of you who don't do your job but you sir have done a wonderful job and you've done it with the ymca the jeopardy program thank you. all of them thank, thank you, thank you, you very much. much thank you candido appreciate it thank you so much sean We need to fix our sidewalks. We need to trim our trees. We need to do everything to the city. And even fix the sidewalks. Uh, want to extend an invitation to, to hear my choir one day, the council people. Thank you. Thank you very much. James?
Hi, I'm James Arias. Good morning. Um, I'm from Pacoima, California, and I need to uh, talk to the council about um, illegal vending in my area. It's uh, in a residential area. There's other businesses that sell the same thing that they do, and they're legitimate businesses, and it affects the community um, because of public safety. You know, they stop in the middle of the street. Also, our parks have um, been affected by the illegal vending, and they also use the park as their parking. <laughs> So um, that's all I wanted to make a comment about. Thank, thank you. Thank you very No, sir, thank you very much. Mr. Walsh. Which one? Which one? Which one? John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, we had a rape. There's a $50,000 reward. Uh, we're told where the rape didn't occur at UCLA, the rape that was arrested yesterday was not the rape that happened here. Maybe Mr. Koretsu will tell us where the goddamn rape occurred. How can you that offer $50,000? Uh, that, that was on an agenda item to speak about, not on general public comment. The issue of rewards. If you are going to issue a reward of $50,000 for any crime, you must tell us where the crime occurred. The reason you will not tell us where the crime occurred is it might hurt your chances for the Olympics. I'm again asking, you are, is there anybody up here who will tell us where the damn rape occurred? Joe Vitti, uh, Joe, you can just, all right. morning. You just got the cord. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, my name is Joe Vitti. I'm president of Valley Vote. And um, the Valley Vote Executive Committee supports Councilmember Council Member Fuente's motion calling for a 2016 ballot measure to restructure the DWP. He calls for replacing the Volunteer Board of Water and Power Commissions with a full-time professional paid board members. This proposal is essentially the same as that of a recommendation of the LA 2020 Commission report, A Time for Action. Uh, also, we also agree with Councilman, Councilman Fuentes. He states it would be irresponsible of us to approve a rate increase without addressing the need for critical governance reform at the department. One of uh, LA Controller Ron Galpin's priorities has been to make the Department of War and Power more uh, uh, responsible and transparent to ratepayers. Ron found the average wage increase for the DW, DWP workers was 20% greater than LA city workers. Right, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Ms. Fogler? Okay, what happened in San Bernardino, I don't want happening down here in my neighborhood here in the Valley, San Fernando Valley. So we need to be aware that we need to be, uh, that we need to make sure that Washington knows where Los Angeles stands, that we're not going to allow these terrorists coming in here and hurting us here in the San Fernando Valley. And I need this open so we can keep this being addressed. Now, uh, the video conference needs to be opened down here in Van Nuys so we can keep talking about that we don't want the terrorism here in the San Fernando Valley and Obama needs to know that. You need to send a message to him. We don't want it here. And we need to tell the Democrats and Hillary that if we need to have the Republicans take over so that they don't bring the terrorism here into Los Angeles. We want to fight them over there, not here. So I want the Democrats to know we don't want the terrorists that come here to Los Angeles. And I want to let the Jews know that they're, we're on borrowed time now. We may have to return to Thank you very much. Israel. Ms. Perlman? Okay. No on English or for supervisor. Please vote. Don't again, vote for again, him. Again, okay. Ma anyway, items that are under this thing. purview of this council. It's not just any okay. general public okay. items okay. that are under purview of this council only. Okay, I'm, let me go back. We'll go back to the rules. Okay, we've, okay. We've been very we lenient with the rules. I'm going to set your clock over. Okay, good. Okay, and it's a warning to anybody else. Okay. If you go outside of anything that's outside of the purview of this body, you're going to forfeit your time. But I'm going to be generous with you because I know you 
know the rules, but I'm going to let everybody else know. Okay. That's the last warning. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. We need to bring back uh, Van Nuys video conferencing and make public comment back to two minutes. Any any uh, less is not fair. Uh, Los Angeles, be very careful when you vote in California election. Hel Hillary will have California, Los Angeles destroyed and won't take terror seriously. Hillary, Obama, and the Democrats uh, won't um, uh, don't believe in fighting with ISIS. Jews, be ready to leave is uh, to leave and go back to Israel because you know if we have to be able to take care of the. Um, terrorist um, that may come over here. North Korea could send something over here and send a bomb over to us, or I, um, I'm not sure if Iran can. So um, we have to be able to, Los Angeles has to be very concerned about what happens in the rest of the country. We are not in a bubble. So what happens in the election is very important. What happens in the other part of the world does matter. Thank you Thank very you. much. Ms. Sarnoff. Well, it's been a while since I heard the 2020 commission uh, mentioned, but I uh, attended uh, a lot of those meetings, as Mr. Huizar knows. <laughs> um, I, I want to bring your attention to the fact that in the last two days in the LA Times, uh, the headlines read, Utility Facing Charges in Gas Link <coughs> Leak. Uh, I wish you would stop calling it a leak when you talk about Porter Ranch. It's I agree with the people that have talked before and said it's a geyser. Um, another article is on the overhaul of the state utilities panel saw. Uh, this is relating to Porter Ranch and Aliso Canyon. And I want to ask one question, and that is, how close is the New Hall Ranch project? And it's Santa Clarita Valley, and it's been sort of approved by the L.A. County Board of Supervisors years ago and it comes back up and I understand it's being fast tracked right now and I think we need information on that and I think Great, thank you very much okay uh, Eric that's you Thank you, uh, Mr. Englander. It is Eric Previn. Uh, please use my full name. Nothing personal there. Uh, David Rue is a great man, and I would just like to say thank you for addressing the question that came up. But it is noted that the $137,500 refund was uh, to the Toluca Estates Group who hire private security. That is not what I would describe as a reflection of all of CD4. So thank you for your uh, help on that. Um, and by the way, if we have an ethics question, Mr. Englander, and you should stay out of this, obviously Anna DeHaan, who is a NBC Universal government helper and ethics commissioner, could help with that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Today, the YMCA came up, and I am a 31-year veteran of that group. I Actually, I'm, I go back further. I'm 40. So when I was seven years old, I was a YMCA guy. I still am, and I love the place. Uh, they got to stay out of politics, though, sir, because you gave them 250000 Martinez gets money from all these guys. It's not appropriate. Mid-Valley's terrific. They're really helping. They need to work on the field nearby, though. But in, uh, in my district at North Hollywood, we are the poor little stepchild. We get nothing. You, sir, have a – you could have, like, the whole family in a big hot tub. Very Thank you nice very place. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dan? Stay on items under this purview. Council members, we had a little lesson in the First Amendment today. Two weeks ago today, you lost my and only my and all of my speaker cards. Officer Duarte knew that he took them. You didn't make an effort to go find them. And I gave Mr. Wesson and Mr. Englander ample, ample opportunity to simply say, I am sorry, and you never did. Because you ran over my rights, I decided to today run over your humanity and the humanity of other public figures. For Mr. Englander to have experienced this and then say First Amendment notwithstanding suggests that the lesson wasn't learned. It, I took no joy in today 
but you have to learn how to say you're sorry, and as soon as you do, this will stop. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So with that, that concludes uh, general public comment, and uh, we have items for posting and referral. We'll consider those posted and referred. And do we have any announcements, colleagues? Seeing none, do we have any adjourning motions? We, we do have one. So we're going to ask everybody in council chambers, everybody to stand. Out of respect for those who have passed before us, we're asking everybody in council chambers to please stand. It's your right not to if you choose not to. And uh, if you choose not to, I'm sure that no one would stand for you. Okay. Um, Mr. Harris Dawson. Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask members to join me in adjourning uh, in the memory of Maurice White today. Uh, in keeping with the number of rock and roll uh, legends that we've lost during this uh, past month, uh, that Mr. Kretz has been uh, bringing to us. Uh, Maurice White is the leader of the, what many people call the best band ever assembled, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, he is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Ro Ro Hall of Fame, and Earth, Wind, and Fire is a member of the Vocal Group's uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, just a quick list of the people that he either wrote for, produced, or played on their albums. Minnie Ripperton, Barbara Streisand, he founded and helped produce The Emotions. Neil Diamond, Etta James, he played drums with Ramsey Lewis, drums with Muddy Waters, The Impressions, Buddy Guy, and uh, Barry Manilow. Uh, Maurice uh, is resting in peace after a 20-year battle with Parkinson's disease. Uh, he passed away peacefully this past Tuesday here in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Mr. Kretz. Uh, if I could just add one fun, obscure thing. Uh, he moved to Los Angeles in 1969 to uh, uh, form his group, the Salty Peppers, which never went anywhere. They changed the name to Earth, Wind, and Fire, and they were immediately uh, an amazing hit. A little salt and pepper did hit later, right? <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Fascinating. Mr. Cedillo. First saw Maurice White at the, um, on, what is that place called? No. 1972 as an opening act, as an opening act, close, close, as an opening act for uh, Tower of Power. And uh, imagine that at the Palladium, at the Palladium in 19... Um, 72, it's okay. <laughs> wow, 1972, they walked out, smoke filled the whole stage, and then uh, they just started with all the uh, kind of uh, authentic instruments that they would roll out with. Anyway, so, and I'm sure at that time, um, Bradley Bagasau, who was a great leader in the Filipino community, uh, born in Los Angeles in 1950, uh, son of a Filipino immigrant, one of the first... Filipino immigrants in California and uh, son of a, a woman who had relocated from rural Ohio uh, both uh, and it, it's interesting because there was a period where Filipinos could not marry uh, in California and it's important that we recognize that history uh, and Bradley was part of that and he was a graduate of Venice High School uh, attended uh, UCLA advanced degree in cultural, uh, cultural anthropology uh, worked at UCLA and worked in helping f uh, found the uh, Asian American Studies uh, in Southern California, also at Cal State Long Beach, where he mentored an array of people. A public Works Commission, Joel Asinto, was one of his uh, protégés, as was my staff person, uh, Mel uh, Iloman uh, and Tony Ricasso were both um, protégés of him. Uh, Mark Polito is also one who considers him uh, his mentor. He was a, uh, uh, one of the best known um, uh, authorities on the indigenous cultures of the Philippines and traveled um, through the 70s into the Philippines, a champion for all causes, um, trying to move the Filipino community uh, forward, and was also uh, noteworthy in his tremendous uh, work as a, a case management worker when 
all those uh, people were uh, in slavery in El Monte, those people in 1996, uh, a whole group of women who were uh, locked up from uh, Thailand, uh, when they were released, they needed support how to integrate back into the community, and he was their caseworker, and they, 20 years later, continued uh, to love him. Uh, an, a giant, a great American. Uh, he was one of the um, founders of many of the Filipino-American groups and was uh, on the Pacific Asian Drug and Alcohol Program and recently served as the CEO of the Asian Rehabilitation Services, working with the disabled. Um, he has a foundation that uh, was recently uh, created, um, and he is preceded in death by his father, Benjamin Bagasau, uh, his mother, Mary. That's the foundation that exists. His sister, Paula, who worked for President Clinton, uh, and his sister, Anne. His sister, Paula, is also uh, married to Tony Butka, who is a great uh, champion for workers uh, in this community. Uh, with great regret, the passing of Bradley uh, Bagasau. Uh, thank you very much. Seeing uh, no other adjourning motions, this council is adjourned. Have a nice weekend. Be safe. <laughs>